Hi, I'm Samuel Bass. I'm the campaign and story lead for Command & Conquer 4, and I'm here today to talk to you about our debut trailer. We give you some behind-the-scenes information, some story factoids, and some other fun stuff, so you really know what's going on with the trailer. So, one of the first things you'll see with the trailer is that it takes place 63 years to the day from the release of the trailer to the community. A um, little thing we did, a little tip of the hat, present day. So what we have here is a flight of GDI orcas escorting someone across a field of Tiberium, the Tiberium-stricken city of Manchester. So one thing you'll notice if you look at the date of the trailer is that it takes place about eight years after the end of CNC3, a few less years after the end of Kane's Wrath, and it also takes place 15 years before the beginning of the actual Command & Conquer 4 storyline. This is the prologue where we, re where we really wanted to set the state of the world so you could better understand where we end up 15 years later. The GDI logo is covered in Tiberium. In fact, the whole city is covered in Tiberium. And if the GDI Council have set up their chambers in this Tiberium-stricken city, you don't want to see the state of the rest of the world. Things aren't good. And here we see the um, dainty feet of Joe Coogan. Now, while this, in, within the context of the trailer, is the GDI Council chamber, where we actually shot this was a real location. This is the LA Times building in downtown LA, which both has great, creepy, kind of science fiction -y corridors, and also a spectacular mo Danish modern conference room that we really wanted to use, and that became the GDI Council chamber. So as you can see, the, these GDI guys were escorting some mysterious figure, who, if you haven't worked out by now that it's Kane, you probably should have. But it's Kane, and he is going to the GDI Council. This isn't, he's not under arrest, though we try and create a little bit of ambiguity there just to keep, you know, keep your interest, but he's not under arrest. He's going to meet the GDI Council and propose to them a solution to this absolute environmental devastation that they're faced with. So, you know, we shot this essentially in a day. It was a long, very hard day, and there was a little bit of clowning around. Uh, we have some great footage of the mighty Joe Coogan running headfirst into a wall and falling ass backwards onto the ground that will probably sneak its way out onto the internet one way or another. So one of the things we tried to do with casting for this trailer and for our cinematics for CNC4 in general is go for people who you really believe in the roles. We wanted the GDI Council not to be, you know, a bunch of hot supermodels. One thing we really wanted to establish with this part of the trailer is a sense of trepidation on both sides. like. Kane is tense, GDI is tense. This isn't something that either side really wanted to happen. They're being forced into this situation where they have to meet and talk. And so we really wanted to sell GDI being nervous, being unsettled, some people really not being happy with the way things are going. So what you see here is the Tastus, which has been in every CNC game since Tib's son. It played a big role in Fast Storm, played a huge role in Kane's Wrath, and is returning in to CNC 4 as a driving element of the story. What you might not know about the Tastus is beyond being a lexicon of alien knowledge, it's also a light bulb with a piece of tape on it that's stuck to Joe Coogan's hand. We did a little bit of movie magic. He's not really holding a glowing ball, and in fact, if you look closely, his hand's actually CG. And now, Command & Conquer 4 logo, which is a good opportunity for me to plug our Name the Game competition. Submit your entries to name Command & Conquer 4, and I really want to hear what you have to say, what you think would be an appropriate name for the end of this epic saga. And with that, I'm Samuel Bass, signing off.